The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Type Bond. When I first got my new table saw, I immediately started to think of some things that we could do to improve the functionality and maybe just add a few creature comforts. Now even if you don't have this particular saw, don't click away because I think these are ideas that apply to just about any table saw out there. So first thing I wanted to do was improve the dust collection. Now I've got a four inch port going into the cabinet and up here we have the stock blade guard which actually does have a dust collection port on it. But the trick is, how do you get suction to this location? Now, SawStop actually has two options for this that you can purchase, but neither one of those really fit the bill for me. For $275, they have an overarm hose connection that taps into the main four inch line. It's an abrupt 90 degree connection that has to take two more 90 degree turns as it winds over, up, then over again to the guard. That's really inefficient. For $495, they have their floating overarm guard. Now that's a much more efficient option, but unfortunately at this drop, I've already split into two four inch ports. I'd have to put another four inch port for that dust collection system. So at this point, it was just a no go for me. So I opted for a DIY solution that would secure the hose up and out of the way while making a short run to a remote controlled dust extractor. A shop vac would work here too. To make the overarm support, I used a 10 foot length of strut channel and some 90 degree brackets. I'm sure there are other materials you could use for this, but this was the best thing I could find at my local home center and the price wasn't terrible. The 10 foot piece was like 22 bucks. I cut the strut into three pieces at eight inches, 12 inches, and 32 inches. The 8 inch piece will be bolted directly to the table saw rail. It's a bit of an odd spot to work and I'm too lazy to move the tools around so pardon the derpiness of my drilling technique. I'm just stepping up the drill bit size in increments until I have the final diameter that I need. I'll pre-assemble the bracket just to check my measurements. I'm sure you can also find cheaper solutions for the nuts and bolts, but the branded stuff that they sell just works really well with the strut system and it looked pretty heavy duty, so that's what I went with. Now this is just a proof of concept assembly, so I take everything apart to give the pieces a nice little paint job. I mean, the silver color looks fine, but given the black color scheme of the saw, it would look a lot nicer painted black. Style points! Now I can reassemble. I'll attach the first two pieces to the rail first, and then attach the overarm section. The hose is attached to the strut using some zip ties. Now to stop the hose from flapping in the wind, I'll add a one and a half inch U-bolt. And when not in use, the hose can just be parked right there. So now for a test cut. Honestly, that's about as good as I've ever seen on a table saw. On my old saw, I actually had a aluminum extrusion for a fence from very super cool tools. I like the idea of an extrusion as it's usually dead flat and it allows you to easily connect sub fences and other accessories to the fence. So on this saw, I decided to go with a 48 inch extrusion from Woodhaven. I'll remove the face of the fence via the access slots on the underside. Honestly, the way these connect kind of sucks as it's really difficult to turn the socket cap screws that hold the face to the body of the fence. I found that the stock fence face wasn't really that bad in terms of flatness, but once removed from the body, to attach the extrusion, I'll use quarter 20 oval nuts and some small 3 8 socket cap bolts. They need to be short or they're gonna run the risk of bottoming out in that T-track. And FYI, the bolts just barely grab the metal around the keyhole slot. It works, but you have to be patient with the placement of the screw head. I'll snug up the bolts while still keeping the fence just a little bit loose. With the fence in position on the saw, I'll use paper shims to raise the extrusion slightly above the table. Now it's just high enough that it doesn't cause interference with the surface, but not so high that work pieces can slide under it. I can then clamp it in place, turn it over, and tighten the bolts. Look, fences don't need to be dead flat, but when they are, it just feels good. 
Now I use a lot of sacrificial and supplemental fences on the table saw and having an aluminum extrusion makes adding them and removing them a whole lot easier. If you're gonna make something like this, go ahead and make a few since it's much easier to do it now. You'll thank me later when you need a new one. Mine are being made out of some scrap melamine. I'll counterbore first and then drill the through holes. To attach them, I'll use the same oval nuts as before, along with 3 quarter inch flat head cap screws. Once installed in the strip, they can slide right onto the fence. Snug it down, and it's ready to go. Sometimes the work calls for a tall fence, so check out this chonker. And sometimes we need a little tiny stop to help make safe cross cuts. So cute. I think I'll call him Cremona. Now it's inevitable that the extension wing of a table saw will collect crap again and again and again. So I thought maybe I should do at least something to try to mitigate the mess. I had a small wire organizer basket sitting in my office for a while now and thought it might work well for this. So I just screwed it to the extension wing and blammo! Okay. A futile attempt to keep the saw surface clean was born. A great place for push sticks just not that one. Now here's a super cool idea that I got from Myers Woodshop. It's a 3D printed drawer that makes use of the dead space inside this rail. I printed my own using a free STL file, but you can actually buy them directly if you don't have the means to make one yourself. And I think you can buy ones made out of other materials too. I've had it for a few months now, and the only issue is that I kind of forget that it's there. Now a very important upgrade to any table saw is a zero clearance insert. It'll give you better cut results, and you don't have the risk of small pieces falling between the blade and uh, sort of getting wedged down between the blade and the insert. Uh, now the ones that saw stop sells are typically priced, they're about 55 bucks right now. Um, and you would want one for a standard kerf, you'd want one for dados. If you do a lot of beveled cuts, you may want one for beveled cuts. And the problem is, these aren't really reusable. Like once you use them for that particular task, you're stuck with that. And if you change the width of your blade or the width of your dado stack, it may not fit properly within that. So there is a better solution. And in the long run, I think it's more cost effective. This cauliflower insert is initially more expensive at $99, but it features these inset inserts that you could drop in and they're sort of disposable. You can get a four pack for about 14 bucks and you could set them to any width you need and if they get chewed up, you could easily replace them. And one of the best safety upgrades that you can make for a table saw, it's a little bit pricey, but it's the Jessum clear cut stock guides or something, I can't remember what they're called exactly. Uh, but the idea is they're spring-loaded, they mount to the fence, they keep pressure down on a workpiece, but also keep pressure into the fence. So I find it really useful when cutting sheet goods in particular. But attaching it to the fence can be a little bit of a challenge. Now it comes with a track somewhere. And this track is intended to mount directly to the fence, but sometimes you don't want the track there. So what I've seen people do is they'll embed this into a piece of wood and then use something like mag switch magnets to hold that whole unit down to the fence so it's easy to remove and, and put in place. The problem I have with that is the mag switch magnets will cost you probably like a hundred bucks, maybe more depending on what size you get, and that's adding to an already expensive accessory. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually drill holes and tap. I don't mind having a couple holes in the top of the fence, but I do wanna be able to completely remove this when I need to. The Jessam kit came with four quarter 20 bolts, so I'll drill the appropriate pilot hole for a quarter 20 tap. It just happens to be a nice, proud American 13 64ths of an inch. Once the holes are drilled, I slowly run the tap through the hole to cut the threads. Now I can attach the T-Track by securing the four bolts. It's definitely more work to do it this way, but it's a lot cheaper than the magnets and I really only use the guides once in a while, so no big deal setting this up. To this day, the table saw still remains one of the most frequently used tools in my shop, so it pays to put a little bit of extra effort and money into accessorizing it, making it easier to use, more accurate to use, and safer to use. So hopefully you guys found this uh, stuff interesting, and maybe even if you don't have this particular saw, like I said before, maybe you can apply it to your saw. All right, thanks for watching. Good luck with accessorizing your table saws. And the home of the brave. Complex fractions are cool.